Do you long to feel more joy in work and life? Do you want to reduce stress and sleep better? Are you looking for healthy ways to cope? Join Speedway Jefferson, certified mindfulness practitioner and lawyer, and learn to operate from your peaceful path. Harness the power of mindfulness meditation to feel softer, more clear, supported, and cheerful, starting with just five minutes a day. Over the past few years, life has thrown the human race collective curveball after curveball. You would think it would unite us against a single enemy like coronavirus or global warming. Today, we're going to start unpacking key, a key ingredient that can help us navigate the challenges of work and life feeling energized and even joyful. Hi, and welcome to Mindful in Five, Operate from Your Peaceful Place. To help us think through this is my returning guest, Brent. And by the way, the opinions we express here are our own and not attributable to our employers. Hi, Brent, and welcome to Mindful in Five. Thanks, B-Way. It's great to be with you again. I can't believe it's been a year and change since we did our had our conversation about returning to the office. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. It's been a while. Yeah. Um, so Brent, your first guest appearance on this podcast was in season one. I think it was episode 10 when we talked about your return to the office, mindfulness strategies. Listeners, it was an insightful approach and you'll find a link in the notes for this episode. Uh, so, Brent, refresh us on what you'd like us to know about you. And you're so right. The conversation um, that we had last summer is as relevant um, today as it was last summer, and I discuss it with my colleagues all the time. It's it's an ongoing discussion in, in our office, that's for sure. Uh, about me, well, first and foremost, I'm a husband, a father, uh, a son and a brother, um, and a friend and a colleague and a mentor to quite a few people. I, I work for a multinational company based here in the Twin Cities and my current role is as a strategic account leader where I serve a handful of large multinational customers on behalf of my employer. When I'm not absorbed in my work or my other various roles, I'm an aspiring author who loves to tinker in the garden, although as I look outside right now, there's not too much tinkering left to be done and I like to travel the world and go to the gym most days. So my wife, Julie, and I are also passionate about the performing arts, and, and we regularly attend musical and theatrical performances here in the Twin Cities and elsewhere across the country when we travel and even outside the country when we were fortunate enough to do that. So that's me. Through a series of conversations about winning in the workplace, we landed on this topic of optimism. Tell us why you are passionate about this topic. Well, first and foremost, I'm not a psychologist or a doctor, nor am I an academic. So let's get that out of the way for first and foremost. But what I am is a 58 year old man who has lived and read and experienced my fair share of ups and downs in this life. And that goes all the way back to when I was a, a little boy playing organized sports. Uh, uh, you know, and, and so that's that's a little bit of that. But um, and the important point I want to make is that I, I really aspire to live a hopeful, positive life um, where my cup is half full to overflowing. And I, I, I want to be a catalyst for what is good in this life. And so for me, being optimistic means being hopeful that things, no matter how big the opportunity or the challenge that's in front of me at the moment, I will work out for the best. And not only for me, but for the people that that I love and care about. Um, for me, that's the essence. This is the essence of what optimism looks like and why it's so important to me. And it's something I'm I'm mindful about and I work on and and, and practice towards most days. And I would guess, except for one's spirituality, I'm not sure there are anything more important and our most important relationships in our physical and mental health and how we choose to make a living. 
those are my thoughts, Speedway. What do you think of the subject of, of optimism and why is it meaningful to your listeners? You know, I have found that employees everywhere are really looking for ways to strengthen their psychological and emotional capacity to handle the challenges that work and life have thrown at them, especially in recent years. They have a sharper focus on the need and desire to maintain good health, reduce stress, increase resilience, and even joy. We have had, even in the legal community where it has historically just not even been a thing, to talk about things like emotional wellness and where are you today? Um, even in the legal community, we have had, I think, an explosion of these kinds of conversations because everybody recognizes how important it is. And so optimism can serve as a key ingredient in achieving those aspirations. And, you know, even as I say this, I know that optimism can mean different things to different people. So just to level set, share with us what your definition of optimism looks like. Sure. I want to just connect back to your point about in the legal community, it's the same for me. I'm a sales professional and optimism has always been supposed to be an inherent aspect of successful salespeople. And I, I think it largely is, but um, I think this this topic today is gonna to be particularly relevant um, to sales professionals who can get knocked off their game as easily as not. And so let's start with what I, what I believe optimism is not. For me, it's not perpetual sunshine and happiness. I just, life isn't always great. At least it hasn't always been great for me. Um, some days are just tough. And the idea that we should be positive all the time feels like a self-induced stressor it just doesn't feel real or attainable or authentic at least it doesn't feel that way to me um, so my definition of optimism is built around hopefulness and the belief that things are going to work out well for me because one my expectations are realistic and two because i have a, a credible plan of action that's going to increase the likelihood that the the desired outcome that i'm pursuing or or looking for um, is actually going to work out in the end. Um, if I happen to be in what I like to call my flow state, <laughs> then my optimism is heightened even further. And 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 meditation, I think, is critical to, to finding that flow state. Um, and I want to emphasize, though, the credible plan of action. I, th I think because based on everything that I've read and as well as, well as my own experience, optimists have a bias for action. They, they like to get things done um, and those are qualities that, that certainly apply to me. I really like that definition because I think many people tend to equate optimism with happiness. And that is really not what you said. Uh, interestingly, your definition of optimism is also very much aligned with Merriam-Webster's definition of optimism. Uh, did you know that? I, I, I didn't know that this was a homegrown uh, <laughs> definition. I never consulted that dictionary or Google. Yeah, so it's it's the idea, you know, it. so Merriam-Webster talks about it as a doctrine that this world is the best possible world and an inclination to put the most favorable construction upon actions or uh, and events or to anticipate the best possible outcome. So it's really not just about, you know, I'm thinking and I'm, I'm happy and the world is happy and life is happy. Uh, if we just look through the lens of physical wellness, scientific studies demonstrate that optimism can promote healthier habits, improve your cardiovascular system, boost your immune systems, and reduce the negative effects of stress in the body. What do you think of that? I love it, and and I couldn't agree more. And, I'm, and there's a lot to unpack there. Um, physical health, emotional health, confidence. Um, boy, it feels like a, a pretty important font that's worth tapping. I would agree, you know, and there's an emerging view of optimism in um, the psychological field that that holds that there is a real impact on health 
And behavior is actually even more important than outlook. And that goes back to what you said about that plan of action. And this view then aligns with what you said about basing your belief that things will turn out well on having that credible plan of action because that increases the likelihood of good outcomes. And by this definition, it is when we engage the world and take concrete steps to mobilize our positive intentions and goals that improve our health and the outcome in whatever it is that we are trying to get at. And this is just an anecdotal example, but I'm a proud card carrying optimist and I've never had major surgery, I'm in great health. Uh, I look a lot younger uh, than my 52 years and people are always you know, shocked and surprised when I say it. I rarely even have headaches and it is my view that you attract which you reflect. And I'm fond of telling people I don't get sick. And even though that's not 100% true, uh, what that does I think is promote a lifelong commitment to managing my diet and consistent physical activity, which then reduces the likelihood that I will get sick. And even when I do get sick, I feel like I recover much faster. So are those positive health effects um... Uh, just do you have you accrue those just by having a positive outlook or do you think there's something else in play there well i think it's all of it isn't it it's your habits it is what you do but it's i think it's also a powerful component of that is what you think about um because i say all the time you attract what you reflect so if i walked around thinking gosh i'm always sick i would probably be sick a lot more often because i would just you know, I'd be, I'd be inviting and sort of manifesting this um, invitation for things that perhaps I did not want. Um, so just as my anecdotal example, I actually uh, got COVID a while ago and I do not take it lightly because my mother, uh, I had an uncle and a, uh, my mom who both got COVID and died from it. And so it's not a it's not a uh, it's not a thing to be played with. I got COVID on a Friday afternoon, and um, it manifested for me. It was a sore throat, and I was just really I got really tired um, on day two. So Friday I get COVID. Saturday I was lying in bed thinking, well, I can't go anywhere. I'm um, quarantined in the bedroom. <laughs> And I don't watch a lot of television generally, but there's this TV and there's my bed. And I thought, this is actually not so bad because guess what I'm going to do all day? I'm going to sleep and I'm going to watch television. And my husband, God bless him, is going to bring me my food. This is actually pretty cool. And so that's what I did all day Saturday. And frankly, I was just tired. So I did most, I did mostly sleep. Sunday rolls around and by about noon, I was like, you know what? I'm tired of being sick. Um, so I jump up, I go take a shower and I take a COVID test and it was negative. And so when I called the nurse to cancel my Monday appointment, screening appointment to get the pill, she said to me, you know, I've never heard of anybody who had started symptoms and tested positive on a Friday and then was negative by Sunday. Now, I suspect that that didn't just happen because I'm an optimist. I think it probably happened, as I said earlier, because I have had a long history of just healthy habits and COVID hits people in different ways. So I think my variant of it was probably also the one that is perhaps most contagious, but the least virulent. And, um, but certainly optimism helped me get through that period because I wasn't focused on, oh my gosh, I've got COVID, this is gonna last forever, this is horrible. I was just focused on, this is great. I get to sit around and watch TV and not be bothered. How cool, if you're gonna have COVID, have a TV in your room, right? So that's what I was thinking. Um, but there's a there's a silver lining to just about everything, I think. And and so that was that was my example of it. So 
uh, not by way of saying you can get through COVID just with optimism, um, but uh, I, I think that it sure does help. It's an outcome. It, it's 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 a place that's a it's a it's a byproduct of said things, you know, um, and maybe I wish I would have made that point. It's a byproduct of self care. It's a, it's a byproduct of reasonable expectations. It's a byproduct of a credible action plan. It's a byproduct of of instinct being instinctively hopeful. And therefore, one becomes more optimistic. It's about t you know all those things, and it's it's that next level. And Dorothy did a night. Dorothy Inez did. She helped me. You know, from self confidence comes optimism. From self care comes self confidence comes optimism. And I listened to her that twice. It's the only one I I think I've only listened to twice, um, other than my own. <laughs> <laughs> because it was that good. Um, and and I thought, wow, right on, girl. I mean, th that's exactly right. So it's a little bit further up in the hierarchy, if you will. But, um, I would say the three things <laughs> that I would, I, I think we said, and maybe we should do a wrap up, and bring them all together is number one, optimism is not about being, ha is not about feeling happy. Mm -hmm. um, and so the fact that you might not be someone who thinks of themselves as having been born that way doesn't mean you can't acquire it. Number two, optimism is centrally about having a plan of action. And uh, yeah, it's about you know, feeling and believing that things are going to come out well, but it really can be driven on having a plan of action that gets you the results that you want. And I think the third thing, the last thing that we talked about is it doesn't matter where you are right now, you can pick yourself up regardless of what you have chosen in the past. You can start from where you are right this minute and start putting together your plan of action for whatever it is that you want to achieve. And if you don't feel good about your plan of action, then create one that you do feel good about. But optimism is really about moving forward from a place of positivity and confidence that the things that you're putting out there are going to turn out well for you. It's not really about just sitting around and feeling happy. I agree, um, but but let's let's turn this inside out a little bit. What do you say to the listener who says, "Oh, this is all very interesting, but I'm just not a very happy person. I'm I'm just not naturally optimistic, whether I, I have COVID or not. It's just hard to me. What what? Uh, it's just not who I am. It's not in my DNA. How would you um, answer that um, common you question? Know, I, yeah, I think it's it's right back to what you said. You don't have to be born happy to create a credible plan of action. You don't have to be born happy to take steps that you think are going to get you the results that you want. So first optimism is about being sure, it's about being hopeful about the future, but that can just be based on, I've got a good plan and I believe in my plan. And I would say, if you don't believe in your plan, then create a new one that you do believe in and keep creating and keep reiterating until you have something that you believe actually works. And uh, though that being said, I suspect that optimists are generally more positive uh, than people who are not, and probably a bit more pleasant to be around the pessimistic people. Uh, Brent, how does that, how does that hit you when I say that? And do you have some other thoughts that we can throw in there about optimism? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, you know, I agree, sir, I'm, I'm jumbled there because I was just thinking how I wanted to answer your question. The first is there's optimists, better life outcomes, so for sure. And this spans, these health outcomes and interpersonal relationship benefits 
also include professional outcome, professional outcomes. And so there's research which um, states pretty clearly that people who who bias towards optimism um, have higher incomes than those who don't. And and that doesn't surprise me either. Um, I really want to build on the action orientated, and it's 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 interesting how just baby steps, leading indicators. I'm working on a, a big project at work right now, and there's a lot of ambiguity, and there's there is no roadmap necessarily for where we are and where we want to get to. And the way I'm navigating it is just really um, through through baby steps every hour, every day, with both my customer and my internal team, and is giving me the confidence and the optimism that you know, when we have our our important conversations here in the weeks ahead that things are gonna work out. They're gonna work out for our customer, they're gonna work out for my employer and our team. Um, and just, it's just giving me the, the, uh, the feeling that things are gonna work out. Um, my, my gut, um, busy professionals are sort of the centerpiece of your, of your listener base here um, and that a lot of people can relate to that and how that how that basic action plan and and the baby steps can help give us give us the confidence to um, to make it happen. Um, is there anything else that you would add, Speedway, to this conversation? Sure. Um, you know, for those people listening to this podcast, watching the pod video, uh, who think, "Well, it's too late for me because I've already made my choices," and um, I have already compromised my body's ability to function in the way that I want, or if you were born with certain conditions that create headwinds, I would say, remember that mindfulness is about being present in the moment without judgment and without being overwhelmed by what's happening around you. How that translates in this particular context is don't judge yourself for how you have treated your body in the past, how you are maybe less likely to be able to do certain things. Uh, you are not less than due to any impairment that you may struggle with. Wherever you are right now, you can turn over a new leaf and start tilting your mindset and your actions towards optimism. What do you think of that? And do you have any final thoughts, Brent? Um, I agree completely. Uh, I, I, I think that we um, there's always there's always an opportunity for a reboot and a, and, and a restart um, and to think anew. Um, uh, uh, absolutely, to think anew about that. So, I actually have a few thoughts here. The first relates to this notion of self care, which your recent guest guest Dorothy Inez did such a a really wonderful job of unpacking uh, a few weeks ago. As Dorothy stated so well, the stories we tell ourselves every day become the narrative by which we live by. And you know, it's tough to become more optimistic or to build your capital base of optimism, if you will, if you're filled with negative self-talk. So I would encourage everyone to watch that uh, video cast, podcast, or listen to it or whatever um, to really um, hear her message, which was excellent. So my point is try to be kind to yourself whenever you can. This is not about having low standards or setting the bar too low. It's about celebrating baby steps and small wins. And as I said a minute ago, success begets success and the pre is the precursor to becoming more optimistic. And secondly, and it's highly correlated to what Mindful and Five is all about, Spew, and that is anxiety is a killer of optimism. I think it's really difficult to become more optimistic or build your optimism if you suffer from chronic chronic anxiety. And we all have moments of anxiousness. I I certainly do, but frankly, with the help of, of your mindfulness meditation platform, I've learned how to mitigate most, if, if not all of that, to be honest. Um, and that's the point. Practicing mindful meditation is central to putting yourself in the best position possible to build your optimism balance sheet, which is another way of saying it, and becoming more hopeful about those things that matter that matter most to you. Um, is there anything else that you would add, Speedway? No, I think we've covered it, but I agree with everything that you just said. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. 
And I wonder if you will come back and help me share some more ideas about how do you, now that we've talked about what it is and isn't and why we should all want it, I would love it if you'd come back and talk uh, with us about how do you actually cultivate optimism? Would you do that? Love to, look forward to it. Fantastic. Well, thank you for kicking off our discussion at the intersection of mindfulness and optimism. Thanks for having me again, Speedway. All right, listeners, you have heard it here and um, go forth and create that plan of action that you feel confident is going to be positive and yield positive results for you. Until next time, this is Speedway saying be mindful and be well. Thank you for listening to Mindful in 5. If you enjoyed it, share it with a friend. Follow and rate it on your favorite podcast platform. Pick up your signed copy of the book and journal from SpeedwayJefferson.com or unsigned copies from Amazon, Barnes & Noble, or wherever you get your books. Visit SpeedwayJefferson.com to download sample chapters of the book, watch videos, and become a mindful ninja. Join us on the LinkedIn Mindful in 5 group and share your thoughts. Until next time, be mindful and be well.